Hello, sixth graders, and welcome to today's lesson on ancient Greece. Today we're going to focus on the forms of government that evolved over time in ancient Greece and how Greece began to experiment with a form of government we now know as democracy. Uh, for full disclosure, Mr. Blumendahl is not feeling well, and I will probably be pausing this video quite a few times to blow my nose and take a drink of water. So, you are warned. As always, we're going to start by reviewing our vocabulary. And our first vocabulary word that we're going to want to review is monarchy. And as is represented by the jewel-encrusted crown, a monarch is what we usually think of as a king or a queen. So if you have a form of government where the king or queen is in charge, you are living in a monarchy. Sometimes they might be called an emperor or empress, or a czar or a czarina, or a kaiser, but uh, it's the same thing. You're being ruled by a king or queen. An aristocrat is someone who dresses in cool green robes. Nope. They're a member of the most powerful class in ancient Greek society. Uh, the aristocrats did all the jobs that made society work, and they got to experience the privileges that went along with that. Uh, if we were to compare it to our society today, the aristocrats would be the people who get all the cool seats at the Blazer Games and get to sit in the front row at the opera. Not that many of us go to the opera, but if we did, they would be the people sitting in the front row. More importantly, they were the people that made society work. And you're going to want to pay attention to that later on. Oligarchy is a system that evolved over time, and it came about when very few people, a small group, decided, we're going to run the show. So if you have power in the hands of a few people, you are living in an oligarchy. Tyranny. Most people think of tyranny as a bad word, but in the Greek context, that was not necessarily the case. Tyranny is a government in which absolute ruling power is in the hands of a single person who is not a lawful king. In most cases, tyrants seize power by force and do what they want, which at first is not such a bad thing, but as they become comfortable in power, they can become corrupt, and then when they die or lose power, figuring out who's going to replace them can become a problem. And now we're going to take pause number one. Please stand by. Thank you for your patience and cooperation. We will now talk about democracy. Democracy is the form of government we like to think of as the best here in the United States. Democracy is a government in which power is held by the people who exercise that power directly, which would mean everybody votes on everything, or through elected representatives, which is the form that we are used to here. In a democracy, the average citizen still feels as though they have some power and influence over what goes on, even if that power and influence is limited to casting their vote every couple of years. In a democracy, citizens are extremely important. We talk about citizenship all the time, but being a citizen is a very important concept. A citizen is a person who has certain rights and duties in a city, state, or nation. So amongst those rights would be the right to participate in society, the right to work, the right to be protected by the state, and so on. The duty part is the part that we don't think about very often, but we do have responsibilities to our society. Uh, jury duty is an example. And if you're voting and you're helping to make decisions in your society, you also have a duty to be informed and make sure you know what's going on. Otherwise, your vote uh, can be manipulated, and that's not something anybody wants. The assembly is where citizens got together to make decisions in ancient Greece. 
So the picture you see there is actually of the Roman Senate, but it is a form of assembly. And there are many states that call the lower house of their legislature the assembly as well, which basically means the place where people get together to make decisions. In ancient Greece, that place was called the assembly. Now, our essential question for our Cornell notes, which should be written across the top, is how did democracy develop? And we're going to break this into four sections. So I think if you made a grid with four boxes uh, for monarchy, oligarchy, tyranny, and democracy, you would be able to take these notes fairly easily. Uh, you'll see there's a link to a video there that will not work in this uh, YouTube presentation, but if you're looking at the actual PowerPoint, you can click on that link and it will work. In the beginning, most Greek city-states, like most uh, early civilizations, were ruled by a monarch. It's a system that developed in many different civilizations, including Greece. And basically, they came to the point where they realized, we need to have someone in charge. And when that someone dies, that someone will pass their power on to their son. Unless they don't have a son, in which sometimes they would allow that power to be passed on to a daughter. Like in Egypt with Hapshetsut. The king would get power from his father. So simply by being the son of the king, you got a chance to be the king yourself. That's a pretty good deal. Unless you don't know what you're doing. The kings used the aristocrats to help them run the city-state. So the aristocrats would be the people who did the jobs that made the government work and kept everyone else happy. So if the aristocrats were not part of this equation, the king would not be as powerful as he was because they helped to make him powerful by doing the jobs that needed to be done to make things work. The word aristocrat comes from the Greek word meaning best. So aristocrats were people who were the best at what they did and they got to experience privilege in society because they were the best at what they did. It was the belief that the Greeks had that only the best should lead. So, lucky for them, they were considered the best. Until one day they realized, hey, wait a minute. We're the ones doing all the important jobs in society. The king is kind of taking advantage of us. What if we just got rid of the king? Boys and girls, stay tuned because we're going to find out what that led to after yet another break. All right, boys and girls, break's over. Let's talk about our next topic, which is same essential question at the top. How did democracy develop? But now you're going to switch to the next part of your grid, and this is going to be all about oligarchy. The aristocrats began to realize they did not need the king to rule. And so eventually they said, let's get rid of the king, and we'll continue doing what we've been doing. We'll just do it without him, and we'll get all the glory instead of the king. And that seemed to work well for a while. The problem was that after overthrowing the king and running the show for a while, uh, they became pretty comfortable with themselves, and they also didn't have anybody challenging them, so they pretty much worried about their interests and the interests of people like them, the wealthy, the connected. They did not worry about the average Joe Greek very much at all. And so people at the bottom began to get a little bit restless. Things worked out for a while, but eventually they only looked out for themselves. So that allowed people to rise up to challenge them and say, these guys are corrupt. These guys are only looking out for themselves. We need to take these guys out. And that led to, da 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 da, tyranny. 
because you really expect me to trust you to rule yourselves? Uh, 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 uh. No. When the aristocrats became too powerful and only looked out for themselves, strong leaders emerged to challenge them. Basically said to the people, hey, look at these guys. They're only worried about themselves. If you allow me to take power, I'll take care of them, and then I'll take care of you. Usually, tyrants came from the military because they had to have uh, I won't say guns, because there were no guns back there, but they had to have weapons and force behind them in order to take out the people at the top. And sometimes this was bloody. Uh, most cases, these people took power by force, and at first they would try to work for all of the people who got ignored by the oligarchs. And for a while, the people at the bottom would feel like their lives got better. But, eventually, tyrants got cozy with all the power and started thinking of themselves and becoming corrupt. And the people at the bottom were like, hey, this isn't working out for us anymore. We better try something new. So, that is when the real transformation took place. Greeks were the first ever in the world that we know of that practiced democracy that gave this a shot. And this is pretty important. Athens was the first city-state to develop democracy. They got rid of their tyrants and they created a system in which the people, the citizens, could actually influence the decisions of the government. Citizens were able to vote directly on all major issues, which was easier to do because Athens had a small population People could walk to the assembly, they could listen to the arguments on either side, and they could help to make decisions. Anyone who was a citizen of Athens was able to speak before and vote in the assembly. And the assembly was the place where all the laws were made. Now, I'm going to say that most people who were considered citizens were male, and in most cases they were males who had special privileges in society, but this was still a far more inclusive form of government than any that had ever been tried before. We are a democracy here in the United States, but because we have 380 million people living here, we cannot reasonably expect every single person in the United States to vote on every single law the United States government passes which is why we elect representatives to make those decisions for us. Our members of Congress, our senators, and our president are all elected by us to make decisions on our behalf, and that's what we call democracy. What we really are is a republic. A republic is a place in which people elect their representatives to make decisions for them, which is a form of democracy, but true democracy is when the people get to vote on all the laws much the same way in Oregon that we get to vote on ballot measures that, if they pass, change the law, even though our representatives haven't voted for them. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a brief summary of the four forms of government in ancient Greece. This would be a wonderful time, at the bottom of your Cornell notes, to write a summary, and specifically in your summary, focus on how each form of government slowly changed into the next form of government. Show the evolution, the process, the progress of these forms of government and how they changed over time. And then we'll invite you to share your summaries with each other and we'll see who in the class can write the best summary. Have at it boys and girls and boy am I glad my voice made it through this presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it.